thank you for tuning into my video and I am assuming that you're here because you're considering getting one of these or one like it for somebody for Christmas um, and you want to understand a little bit more about the current drone regulations and some general tips on safety and perhaps what to buy. So if you stick with me for the next few minutes I'm going to run through all of that information for you and break it down. So we're going to split this up into three sections. First section is going to be general drone safety. The second section is a little bit more information on where you can fly drones. And the third is the all important UK drone registration. Right now is a good opportunity to hit that like button and subscribe because I'm going to try and do a lot more of these videos and keep you updated on any changes that happen with the drone regulations. But uh, let's get into it and let's start with point number one. Actually, before we go into number one, I'd like us to take a moment to appreciate the fact that I have donned a Christmas hat far too early just to do that YouTube thumbnail. So um, please give me a like, thumbs up if you uh, appreciate the fact that I put a Christmas hat on on the 12th of November. So number one, the drone code. Uh, I'm going to put a link below. Uh, to the drone code. This is something that has been drafted by the CAA and provides you with loads of guidelines on where you can and where you can't fly your drone, such as how far away from people you should be flying, how far away from buildings, built up areas, airports, etc. I won't go into the details. Go and read the drone code and that'll give you all the information that you need. Uh, it's only like a one, two page sort of read and it's definitely worthwhile because it gives you the, the real basics. Okay, number two, once you've read the drone code and you're aware how far away from buildings you need to be, how far away from airports and you understand about the, the general safety and whatnot of, of flying drones, there are some other things that you need to be aware of. Private property, national parks, national trust property, um, parks in big cities, all of these have their own rules and, and regulations. So. I know that a lot of the parks in London don't allow you to fly drones. Uh, the, the Peak District says that they don't want you flying drones. The Lake District appears to suggest that you can, providing it's less than 20 kilos. Um, the National Trust won't let you fly drones over any of their property, which is infuriating for me because just up the road from me here, I've got Avebury Stone Circle, which really can only truly be appreciated from the air, and I can't legally fly my drone there. So, right. Number three, and finally, the reason that you've come here is if you're going to buy a drone for your son or daughter uh, for Christmas, for instance, then uh, you've probably been reading about the new drone regulations that have come into place in uh, this month, which is November 2019, and you are probably wondering what you need to do. So I'm just going to talk you briefly through the process and then I'm going to give you all the links below so that you can go and do that yourself. So there are three things that you need to know. You need to register your drone and obtain an operator ID. You need to take an online test and obtain a flyer ID. You then need to mark your drone with your operator ID. Anyone who wants to fly a drone must do the online test and obtain a flyer ID. It's pretty straightforward. It's multiple choice. Once you've read the drone code, you'll have a good idea of most of the things that are uh, going to be asked of you in the test. And here's the big tip. If you get any questions wrong, they tell you which ones you've got wrong and they even tell you the right answers. Second important point is the owner of the drone. So me as the owner of this drone needs to register as the operator, not owner. A little bit of confusion, I think, with the with the naming here, but the owner slash operator needs to register and obtain an operator ID. That operator ID costs nine pounds a year for any drone that weighs 250 grams or more. And it then needs to be labeled on your drone. So let's look at three Christmas scenarios. You're gonna buy a drone for your 18 year old son. What do they need to do? And what do you need to do? Well, you don't need to do anything because at 18, they're responsible to obtain their own operator ID and their own flyer ID. Right, now let's consider that your son is 17. As he's under 18, you need to obtain the operator ID and your son needs to obtain 
the flyer ID, so do the flight test. Then the third one is you want to buy a drone for your 12 year old son or daughter. You need to obtain the operator ID because you're the adult. And as they're under 13, you need to register on their behalf, but then allow them to take the flight test and you have to, I assume you have to sign off the process to say that they've done that. I haven't been through that process because I haven't registered anybody who's under the age of 13, but there is a special link that you go through and you have to sign as the parent or guardian. I'll put all the links below to all of this information and if you've got any questions, please ask. Right, finally, what sort of drone should you be getting? Well, let's cover this off. Um, I'm talking about drones here because that's what's in the news, but essentially this means a drone a helicopter, an, air, an airplane, any flying toy essentially that weighs 250 grams or more that you intend taking outdoors needs to be registered and you need to have an operator ID for it and the operator ID needs to go on the, the aircraft. Right, so um, if you found this video useful, give us give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I'm going to probably do some more and um, I maybe look at a few options that you might be considering for Christmas. But, but basically this video is all about introducing you to basic drone safety, the um, kind of where you can fly the drone and, um, and all about that drone registration process. So um, if you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe and uh, leave any questions below and I'll see you next time.